a war which started in the depths of winter, is now persisting and intensifying through the long days of summer. We've come back to the same front line three months on to assess the morale of those staring down the enemy a few hundred metres away. After more than 100 days, there is a growing sense of frustration among these troops at the creeping Russian advance, which is slowly eating up their territory. What I'm feeling? Nothing much. It's not good news. They are advancing. What else I am feeling? Sadness. I think we are going to win, but we need more weapons, more artillery, more fighter jets. They have ten times more than we do. We are paying with our blood. And the toll is evidently on the minds of young men who had bright futures and careers before the war. It was really scary in the first few days when mortars started hitting us. Even now, it's still scary. Behind the front is the battle to keep the army moving. This tank is being repaired after being hit by artillery. Its commander was decapitated by the impact. Every mission here is potentially lethal. They have received new tanks from the Czech Republic, but they're not enough. Anton is replacing the entire engine on this ageing T-72. The war has corroded the dreams of a young man who hoped to be a teacher. He won't say what he's seen, but it's profoundly affected him. He says everything has changed. I can't become a primary school teacher anymore. I'm afraid of working with kids. Instead, his energies are now devoted to ensuring his tanks are fixed and ready to fight. This is a long way from educating young minds. But the injuries aren't just psychological. There's a whole generation physically maimed by this conflict. Bogdan doesn't want to show his face, perhaps from a sense of guilt he's no longer in this fight. He was hit by a mortar and was lucky not to lose his leg. He's blunt about what it'll take to win. We have to respond with the same long-range weapons Russia is using, with artillery as well. It's difficult to assess with certainty how many Ukrainian soldiers have died. But President Zelensky has said they're losing up to 100 each day. In this cemetery, they can barely keep up with the funerals. In the whole of the invasion of Iraq, Britain lost 179 soldiers. Ukraine is losing almost that number every other day. This is a battle for survival for Ukraine, but the cost in young lives on both sides is staggering. The legacy of blood spilt on this soil won't be known for a generation but each grave represents a broken family whose sacrifice will be paid in grief for years to come. Dam Rivers, News at 10, Eastern Ukraine.